Hello and welcome back everyone. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um Yeah. We're yeah. at I was gonna say we're okay. at Layston Fortress, not but no we're at, we're no. at Wolf we're at Wolf Fort. Wolf Fort. And uh, it's finally main quest time. I'm excited. <laughs> let's find let's find out um, who the dude in black is. Yes. Maybe. But I don't think we will find it out now. Probably not. But I still want sunglasses. And I mean, he here's the wolf fort. It's really peaceful here. I guess we don't need to worry about Calvert inviting us and stealing our puppies or something, huh? Inviting? Inviting us. Is it's a mixture of dividing and invading. Okay. You know, okay. like Arabonia does. Quite a difference compared to the Harkin Gate. Of course, unlike my glorious fatherland, Calvert and LeBurl are easy friends. There are reasons for that, you realize. I imagine our relationship with Calvert has something to do with it. Although, beyond the gate is a mountain pass that would be difficult for a full army to pass through. That's why the gate is so small as well, I recall. Ah, yes. Far different from the Hagen Gate, which faces onto a great open road. I'm still not quite sure about the free-range poultry either way, though. Anyway, <laughs> let's start asking around about about the Earthquaker. We should probably check in with the Guard Commander first. Right. What we should do first is it's steal the chicken. For the chick, give me a egg. Okay, you're free. But you're not. Gif, <laughs> gif, gif. Mm. The poor chicken. You have stop. to pay stop the fee. Stop the chicken. Pay the fee. Hmm. Okay, they won't. They won't pay. No, I'm sad. They, they won't. Hmm. What do you sell? More of the farm, not more roast. Yep. Hey, how's it going? They're Henning. If you want to pass through, they'll do the processing in the building on the other side. Just ask the guy on the duty inside, on duty inside, and he should stamp you guys right quick. Yeah, but we don't want to. We don't have I time kind of to go into to. any other region. I kind of want to. Kind of wanna, uh, you know, see Calvert. I would like to see Calvert. We don't have time. Ah, you're the braces the guild called ahead about, right? You to investigate the earthquake from what Miss Kilika said on the phone? Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's right. Wow, I keep forgetting how uh, thorough Kilika is. <laughs> she even keeps us on our toes every now and then. Anyway, we'll do everything we can do to help. We appreciate that. Thank you. Let's start with your account of what happened during the earthquake, then. Well, let's see. The earthquake happened three days ago, at roughly at roughly 700 hours. 1700 hours. The quake itself wasn't all that strong, and it only lasted 10 seconds. Still, though, earthquakes rarely ever happen around here. Some of my men are spooked, let me tell you. Part that spooked me, though... Once I contacted command at Layston Fortress to report, they told you that no other part of the region had experienced an earthquake, yes? Exactly right, miss. And it wasn't just Layston. Even Zangtheim Gate didn't feel anything. And they're practically up the damn road. I called into Zeiss and Elmo and learned they'd felt nothing either. It's like Kielik has said. Speaking of which, did you hear there was an earthquake in Zeiss today? Yeah, I heard about that. And that's the thing. We didn't feel so much as a wobble here. Localized earthquakes that only strike small, specific areas. Not what I would call the most natural thing in the world. So that's the earthquake then. Did anything else out of place happen around that time? Was anyone strange seen, for example? Hmm... No, I've heard no meaningful reports from my men. It's possible they saw something so minor they didn't feel the need to report it to me immediately, though. Feel free to ask them some questions, maybe jog their memories a bit. Sure. Thanks, sir. Let's go and talk to the gate guards. Hmm. Let's do that. Localized earthquakes definitely are a little bit weird. Yep. But do you need something? Yeah, we're with the Bracer Guild. We'd like you to help with our investigation. I don't mind, but please keep it short. Estelle asked if anything suspicious had happened before or after the earthquake. 
Earthquake? You mean the one three days ago? The day the earthquake happened was just a normal day. If anything suspicious had happened, I'd have reported it long ago. Mm, I see. Seems this was a swing and a miss. Is that all you needed? Yes, that's plenty. We're sorry to have disturbed you during your job. No problem. We're both on the job after all, aren't we? Well then, if you'll excuse me. Alright. Hmm. Maybe we have to talk to the other guy again. Maybe he would now tell us something else. Mr. Henning. Oh. It's Brom. What's <sighs> up? Um, we're from the Bracer Guild? I hope we're not disturbing you, but could you answer some questions? Oh, uh, sure. Estelle asked the soldier about any odd things he might have seen when the earthquake happened. Odd things, hmm? I was uh, checking the light blocking abilities of my head when the quake hit. Huh? I thought the chief was yelling at me at first. But no, I didn't see anyone around. I mean, I thought it w was a prank at first, not an earthquake. Wasn't really all that strong. This isn't so much a strange occurrence as it's an admission that you're awful at your job. Ah, but to sleep standing? That's a rare skill, Estelle. I, however, can consume an entire full course meal with while asleep on the sofa. That's not something to brag about, Lanheim. So, um, was there anything else you can remember? At all? Hmm. Actually, Henning said he saw something weird, but... Something weird? Well, this was the day before the earthquake, mind you. One of the other guards here, Hennings, asked if anyone passed through the gate. When I told him I hadn't seen anyone, he just shook his head. Well, that's curious. I wonder what that was about. He might be able to tell us something. Let's go talk to this Henning guy. Hey, I was right. Also, Olivier, that's a weird skill? Well, if you're just that hungry. You just know. <laughs> oh, hello. What is it? Hello, we're from the Bracer Guild. We have a few questions about the earthquake that happened three days ago, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Gotta say, it was a surprise. First time I've ever been in an earthquake. I had no idea what was going on. So, what did you want to say? Oh, to know. So the thing is, we talked to Brahm, and Estelle explained what they heard from Brahm. Oh, right, that. Yeah, I did ask him that. You asked if someone had passed through the gate? Yeah, let me explain. So, four days ago, I just finished my watch and was going off duty. Just as I was leaving, though, I saw a weird man coming up the road. A weird man? Was it a man garbed in, in white with a mask, by chance? A mask? No, no, he wasn't that weird. It was a tall guy wearing a black suit. He also had these black glasses on. Black glasses? Those could be sunglasses, right? Yes. Such glasses are fairly rare, so it's very likely the same man. Sunglasses, huh? Anyway, just before I went on break, I saw him coming up the road. Most of the travelers who pass by here stop in at the bar, so I figured I'd see him again. I'd see him inside. I take it he didn't? Yeah, that's the thing. He didn't show, so I asked Brahm, and he said nobody'd pass through. And he's a lazy slob, but he ain't so bad at his job that he just let a stranger pass through wind without checking. Hmm. Perhaps he had business at your barracks. He may, have he may have spoken to your commander, for example. See, I was pretty curious at, at that point and asked the commander. And he said nobody been in there during that time period either. 
So, I have to wonder what happened to that guy I saw. Doesn't seem like he came through. Okay, this is really suspicious. We should tell Kyolika about this. Yes, this seems like a good lead. Thank you for sharing all this with us, Private Henning. Okay, my pleasure. I feel better having gotten it all off my, sh off my chest. Hmm, alright. Hmm. Anyone else we can talk to? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's a very small fort, right? Yeah, Wolf Fort is pretty small. Yeah, so no, we did that. We now know that... Oh, we should question... Uh, I guess Maybe talk the to him guy... again. Yeah? No. No. Um... Hmm. Maybe you we again? We did talk to him. Talk to Bram. Maybe talk to... The missing key? May maybe, yeah. Hello. Hey, welcome. Welcome to this totally ordinary bar. Um, may I have a moment? Sure, what is it? Uh, so, uh, we're with the bicycles. We'd like you to help with us with our investigation a little, if you can, anyway. No problem. Not like I have any uh, customers, anyway. Estelle asked if anything odd had happened before or after the earthquake. Hmm, sorry, I can only remember the earthquake itself. Heck of a surprise that was. When it suddenly hit, I was like, rawr, I was shocked. So was there nothing that caught your attention before or after the earthquake? Nothing particularly, different from the norm, no. I mean, I was in the bar the whole time, so there wouldn't be a whole lot that could happen. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. It doesn't seem like there are any leads to follow here. Sorry, I couldn't be of more help. No, don't worry about it. Thanks for your cooperation. Alright, now we're through. That might finish. Okay, then will you let me leave now? Oh, okay, we need to report to the commander, alright. I mean, that makes sense. Hello again, were my men helpful? Actually, yeah. I still told Pace about the man in sunglasses. So Henning saw a suspicious man. Hard to think he has something to do with the earthquakes, but he sounds suspicious regardless. I'll report this, this to command at least, at least. Please do. Alright, I think we've learned all we can here. Let's return to Kirlika with what we know. Alright. Yes. Alright. Hey. It was quick. It's a pretty epic description, though. Tall man in sunglasses and a black suit. Yeah. Hey, you lot! Good, I made it in time. Huh? What do you mean, sir? Has something happened? I contacted Layston about what we talked about previously and heard something surprising. I figured it was up to me to let you all know. Surprising what now? Wait. Don't tell me. Yeah. There was just an earthquake at the Sunktime Gate. What? Oh no. Oh no. Hearing this, Estelle's group rushed to the Sunktime Gate. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, everything's just toppled over. Oh, that's... that's... I saw Ricky and Anton! What? I didn't! They were on top of the... on top of the wall. Oh boy! <laughs> oh, Junge! Uh, what the hell is with you fool braces? Can't you see we're in the middle of the cleanup after the earthquake? If you have to nose around, I'd prefer you to do it later. I'd prefer you do it later. I'm afraid this is our job, sir. Clean up or no? If you have my word, we won't get in the way. May we ask a few questions of the gate residents? If HQ hadn't ordered it, I'd tell you a lot to clear out. I've got some urgent business to take care of. You can get the details from my second in command, Round Officer Talbot. He's in the storage area over there, cleaning up. Okay, I'll talk to him. Thanks. 
Just make damn sure you don't interfere with any actual work going on here. Now if you'll excuse me. I don't care. I will just tippy tappy off. Tippy tappying away. Wow, it's uh, really is kind of bad in here. Do you think we should help out a little? I mean, just to be friendly? This is a military facility, Estelle. I'd suggest we simply finish our business and go. There may be secret documents or some such in this mess that the military doesn't want us lowly civilians to see. Oh, yeah, good point, I guess. Still, this is quite a bit more damaged than the city of Zeiss earthquake, isn't it? That didn't cost nearly as much of a mess. The ferocity of the quake should be a primary line of inquiry, then. As well as asking about our mystery man. Yeah, that guy in the sunglasses. Well, first things first. Let's talk to that second in command guy. Probably the dude all the way to the back. Or maybe where he went in. Hello. No, that. If you need assistance from some kind, speak to Tal. You can speak to Talbot. I've already told you where he is. For now, I have urgent business to that requires my attention. I might not have listened when you told me where he is. A, just in, in any story area, so maybe... There? Nope. Yeah. There? You? Crap, this is going to be such a pain to clear up. Dale, have my life if it isn't done by nightfall, though. Um, excuse me? Sorry to disturb you. Huh? And you are? Mr. and Company introduced themselves as bracers and explained they were investigating the earthquake. Ah, I see. Thanks for the concern, even if Dale doesn't share my things. So you want to know what the situation was like when the earthquake happened, right? Yes, and please spare no detail. Understood. The earthquake began at roughly 1300 hours, two hours ago. The earthquake lasted around 30 seconds and was strong enough to knock down big piled up boxes. Wait, so compared to the quake at the wolf fort, the shaking was stronger and it lasted longer. Both. Both. Yes. The entire earthquake was worse, stronger and longer lasting. And then there was the one which welcomed us to Zeiss. That would, I think, fall in between the other two. Meaning, then, that the quakes are getting more powerful each time. That's, uh, kind of bad, isn't it? The situation does seem to be worsening. But these are natural occurrences. I don't see how we could stop them. I don't suppose the Bracer Guild has any ideas? Um, well, we're not really sure yet, but we're pursuing a few leads. Speaking of which, did anything uh, weird happen before or after the earthquake? Like, were there any suspicious people walking around? Suspicious people? Hmm. Come to think of it, Chesley mentioned something about a strange man yesterday. He's cleaning the roof if you want to hear the details from him. Just lay on the roof. Very well. Thanks for helping us out, sir. Uh, not at all. Good luck. Hmm. hmm. Okay. It brings me great joy to say that no one was injured. Every cloud has a silver lining. Okay. He is true. I mean, we wanted to go to the roof anyway, right? Yeah, to speak to uh, Ricky. And, uh, Ricky, yes. There they are. This guy had climbed to top the wall when the earthquake hit. He was so shocked by the shaking, he almost fell. Had the earthquake been any stronger, he might have really fallen. And he's still lucky in one way, Anton. Oh, oh, oh boy, that was scary. I, I almost fell. Anton, it's, it's two hours ago. I almost fell. <laughs> it's like I mean, I would, I think I would still, after two hours from almost falling off, like, I don't know, 10 meters of wall or higher, probably even, mm -hmm. um, I would also be still shaking. Yeah. True. I mean, in the first place, I would not have been on the wall. But, yeah. Yeah. Who are you guys? You're Private Chesley, right? We're from the Bracer Guild, Private Chesley. May we ask you a few questions about the earthquake that happened recently? 
and Stan's group asked about the suspicious man Chesley saw. Oh right, that guy from yesterday. I don't know if he has anything to do with the earthquake, but I did see a tall man with black sunglasses around. I knew it. It must be the same man seen at the wolf fort. Sir, did you see what this man was doing? Uh, well, he seemed like kind of a tourist, really. I looked at the scenery for a bit, then came down. He sort of caught my attention since you don't see glasses like this often. I He didn't say anything to me and walked off though. I didn't have a chance to talk to him. Ah, uh, okay. Did anyone else see this guy maybe? You know, that's where it gets weird thinking about it. I brought the guy up at dinner since he was kinda weird, but practically nobody else saw even saw the guy. The only one who remembered seeing him was Tabby. Sorry, who works in the mess hall. Literally, get some air. Your poor body, it's dying. Hmm. You know, I actually had a lot of fresh air in here just before we started recording. <laughs> Didn't help at all. No. I'm gonna go down in history as the yawny boy. <laughs> hmm. you, the yawny grill, please. All of the above. Hmm. <clears throat> Unlike the wolf fort, this gate sees quite a bit of traffic. And yet, despite this, there are only two witnesses? How wonderfully spooky. Spooky or not, it would be a good idea to talk to this Tammy and see what she knows. You said she's in the mess hall, correct? Thanks, Chesley. You were a big help. No problem. And yeah, she should be in the mess hall. Good luck with your investigation. Let's see if we find her where she's supposed to be. This one barrel that's not toppled over is kind of sus. That's where he's hiding. <laughs> oh no, there's another. Okay. Some of the barrels are just stronger than the others. They're superior yeah, barrels. They're, they're glued to the floor. Hey, you, you tell me? No, you tell you. That sure was a big earthquake. Haven't felt anything like that in a long time. One way or another, I've got some cleaning up to do. Might as well get started. I mean, this is not a mess hall anyway. No. This Tammy. is a mess all. Ew, all clean again, thanks to the goddess. Huh? Yeah, Tammy, yes? We're from the Bracer Guild. You mind if we ask you a couple questions? Estelle's party asked Tammy about the man in sunglasses she saw. Oh, him, yeah. I passed by him on the second floor in the hallway yesterday. I think he was coming down from the roof. That would match what our soldier friend said, yes. Did you exchange any words when you passed? Well, I did say hello. He just kinda grinned in response and said, yo. Oh no, <laughs> yo. Oh no, he is big, in a suit, has sunglasses and he says, yo baby. What up? Are you lost, baby girl? Oh no, he's, <gasps> he's too cool. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Oh! Oh, just thinking about it makes me all tingly again. He was so wild. Tammy, no. Huh. I think I'm starting to get a picture of him. Do you remember what he was wearing? He had this dark suit, but opened really ca but opened really casually at the chest, right? He looked amazing in it. Oh, and he was wearing a pair of black gloves, I think. So, sunglasses, a dark suit, and black gloves. Right. This guy might as well wear a sign on his head saying, I am sinister, be suspicious of my evil ways. Additionally to the other sign that says, suspect me of doing evil things. <laughs> suspect me of something was what it said. Oh, I wouldn't say suspicious. He had just had a scent of danger 
about him. <laughs> you know, that dangerous tough guy charm, right? Uh, right. Anyway, <gasps> so you just passed by and said hi and didn't see him afterwards, right? Yeah, unfortunately. I um, chased after him a little bit. I thought we could um, um, get to know each other or... Anyway! I, I feel the way they're hyping this dude up, it can only be disappointing when we uh, finally meet him. Yeah. I mean, Blanksy delivered, but can all of them deliver? Hmm. Probably not. I lost track of him in a weird way. A weird way? How so? Hmm. It'll be easier to show you. Follow me. Excuse me, Sanders. Can I step out for a moment? Yeah, go ahead. Just get back before the dinner rush. So, this is where I passed him. Right here. He went walking in this direction. I turned to follow him after a moment, figuring I'd chat with him, right? Okay. When I turned, I saw the, that door over there closing. So I thought, he must have stepped out. Here's my chance to talk to him before he leaves. So I followed him, but... Hmm. Mm -hmm. By the time I screwed up my carrot courage and came out, he was nowhere to be seen. In other words, I lost him. But I lost him here. Lost? But wait a sec. How is that possible? This is a dead end, isn't it? Yeah, and there's no way he could have jumped down from this height, right? Mm. Mm. I, I figured I made a mistake and thought he went elsewhere. I looked all over some time for him and never saw him. Mm. Kind of makes me want to jump off the end there. I missed my chance. Oh, you poor kitten. If it would please you, I could help you forget such lesser men. Knock it off. No one deserves that kind of trauma. I, th I think we have a fairly good idea of what happened now. You were a big help. Thank you again. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, is he some kind of wanted man? A super skilled, cold blooded assassin on the run from the brace again? <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, don't know about that, but he's definitely a dangerous guy. Look, if you see him again, don't go near him, okay? Trust me. Oh, but he's so cool. Aww. Oh well. Anyway, I've got some things to prepare, so excuse me. Keep up the good work, everyone. There's no way you could have jumped down from this height, huh? Estelle, does that remind you of anyone? Yeah. Mm. Yep. He made the jump easily. He did. I think everyone, like all the Ouroboros agent could pro agents could probably make such a jump. Yeah. That's yep, not I uncommon. Would so too. Yep. That silver hat man. No, that silver hat monster who jumped off the top of Grand Cell Castle. The man we know is Lawrence. If the other ones are like him, I think they could jump from here and survive. Yes. I think it's safe to assume we know who our wild sunglasses man is. Another enforcer of Ouroboros, just like the Phantom Thief then. I feel pretty confident saying that, that, that at this point, yes. I also feel confident saying we're done investigating. Let's return to the Guildhouse. I would say the only thing that actually tells us that it's not Lawrence is that he's like 
very um, big, very tall. I mean, Lawrence, I think, would also be tall, but no one ever pointed that out about him. Yeah. So I'm guessing that is not a feature of, of his that stands out. I mean, he also, he like wears a black suit and he wears black gloves and black sunglasses. I mean, yeah, we and know we it's know not what really... what Lawrence's outfit is. Yeah, we know from, from what Lawrence's like, um, stuff is, but, you know, for, for Estelle's team, basically. Because they don't know his normal outfit. Yeah, but they know there are other enforcers. That's true, but it still theoretically could have been him. Yeah. If he changed stuff. But I think um, if if somebody's pointed out to be like tall, it's probably more like in the direction of Zin ish. Again, Telling you. I would Zin, assume. Zin for Enforcer. Yeah. Hey, Zin changed out of his traditional clothing. Nope. They're done. No. Oh. Tita, Professor, what are you doing here? Oh, Stell, hi! <laughs> Perfect timing. We're done investigating the earthquakes, but uh, what are those machines there? <laughs> Good of you to ask, my dear. These are the little things I promised you earlier. We can get th to that in a moment. First, you did, I assume, investigate the Sanctime Gate earthquake. I'd like to hear what you discovered, both there and at the full fort. Right. Okay, so... As there was reported what they had learned at the fort, the gate, and in the city. Hmm. So the earthquakes grow stronger with each occurrence, eh? This is quite serious. Assuming the rate of growth you describe is constant. Yeah. One even stronger than the Sanctime one, hitting the city would be really, really bad. And the man in sunglasses seen at all three locations. I would say it is all but certain that man is an agent of Ouroboros. Given that, I think helping Professor Russell with this experiment is in our best interest. Mm, I see. Those devices the professor brought will let, will let us fight with the power of science, huh? Oh, precisely so. These are septium vein measuring instruments I developed years ago. When placed properly on the ground, they can monitor the flow of a septium vein in real time. Septium... Uh, I know I always ask these questions, but... um, What's a septium vein? The huge veins of septium ore that run deep beneath the surface of the earth. The energy flowing along them slowly moves the surface. Hmm. In the past, they were referred to as both earth veins and spirit veins. And I believe in the east they called the dragon veins. Very knowledgeable, just so. The peoples of the east have built the greatest cities on places where dragon veins converge since time immemorial. The ideal has always been to gather the energy of the land and use it to give strength to the nation. Oh, okay then. I learned something. So these devices can stop earthquakes then? No, I'm afraid not. These will only monitor the flow especially. However, one leading theory is that earthquakes are caused in part by septium vein flows beneath the earth. If we monitor the veins, therefore, we may be able to discover something about what's causing these blasted quakes. I see. That means we need to make sure to set these up before another earthquake occurs. Given that you brought three devices, I take it you have three spots in mind, Professor? I do. Take a look at the map. So, I need you kids to set these up in three locations in this region. Firstly, on the northern Trad Plains, where the Stone Circle is specifically. Next, smack dab in the middle of the Caldia Tunnel. From here, it's near the first bridge. And finally, in front of Layston Fortress. Here, here, and here. That's where I need you to place the devices. Okay, I've got that all done. So do we just need to set them on the ground? I'm afraid it isn't quite that easy. You'll need to insert the sensor needle into the ground at the right angle and also tune the antenna. An antenna? A transmission device, you mean? 
So these devices will transmit the information gathered to another location. Ah, you're sharp! The antenna will send the data to a calculating augment the capel, so we can easily analyze the septium veins' movements. With the capel, we can monitor all three locations at once. Ah, uh, that sounds pretty cool, I guess. Will you be coming with us to help set this stuff up, Professor? No, I need to prepare the capel for all this. Tita knows what to do. She can go with you. <laughs> I get to work with Estelle again. Alrighty. Tita's worth her weight in, a, in Mira anyway. You don't mind, Shara? Not at all. Welcome aboard, Tita. Thanks, Miss Shara. Well then, I need to start tuning the couple. Once you've placed all the measuring instruments, head to the operations room in the central factory. Well, do. What cat, Grandpa? So we need to get all these set up before the ne next earthquake. Let's get to it. Ah, oh, before that. Coordinating a group this large would be a little difficult. We should leave someone here in reserve while the rest of us handle the mission. Your combat party may, on may only be made up of four people. From here on out, when the time comes to form a party, you may choose members aside from any story-mandated members. Aw. Okay. Oh wow, all those three are story-mandated? Wow. Yep. Making me choose between my healers. Be all right, please. <sighs> <laughs> Very well. I'll be on the second floor. If you need me at any time, don't hesitate to ask. Sorry, Chloe. I love you. Reserve party members will be on the second floor of the local guild house. By speaking with them, you may swap them out with any party members who aren't mandatory. This should be okay then. I see. So we need to set up instruments in the tunnel on the north plains and in front of Layston Fortress. Is there any any order we should tackle that in? I shall leave that to your judgment. I will, however, contact Lyston Fortress ahead of you. If we explain our circumstances, I cannot imagine they will take issue with our gathering data in front of their gate. Good idea. Away we go then. Tita, sweetie, we're counting on you. I'll do my best. Alright. This is a good point to of look at course. the new part search. <laughs> Side quests and also end the episode once we've done that. Yep. Uh, some augment parts have gone missing on the central factory, recruiting persons to help search. For details, visit Eric at the central factory first floor maintenance desk. Maple Leaf Inn. Recently we've had rumors of a peeping Tom around the open bath at the Elmo Hot Springs. I'd like someone to come to Elmo when they have some time. For details, inquire at the front, front desk of the Maple Leaf Inn. Another monster and another monster. Okay. Alright. I know what we do next Oof. time episode. <laughs> yep. Yay, more side questing. But I guess Yay. if we have to go inside, uh, inside the central factory to pick up that one quest anyway, we can just set up the, the tunnels. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, I would say so too. <laughs> I think the only thing that we should not do before we finish all the quests, you know, set up the others. Yeah, set up all three. Yeah, I would say, like, if we have to go to the Tread Plains anyway to um, get the monster. And for Elmo. We can always set that up, one up. Mm -hmm. And for Elmo too. Yeah. Well, then we can set that one up and then we can just <laughs> do everything else before we go to Lyston. All right. All right. Yeah. Good then. See you next time, guys. Have a good day. Yeah. And uh, let's get back to side questing. Main quest was just <sighs> too good. It was too good to be true. It was a whole episode of main quest. Not that I hate side questing. I love side questing, actually. But <sighs> Yeah. But sometimes it's like we just got main quests done. But now just we have to do side quests again. God damn it. All right, though. But yeah. Have a good day, everybody. See you next time. And... Till then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.